Hello, I'm Aaron Haid. I have been working for KK Stream since 2015. KK Stream, a subsidiary of KK Company, is Asia's leading media technology provider and a service consultant that has been helping clients build their own vertical media for almost a decade. I have been a software engineer for 18 years. And wish I can keep coding for another decade. I was a C++ programmer in the beginning, but switched to Python in 2017. 2017 was a special year for me because it was the first time I gave a public talk. The topic was about deep learning, and it was in PyCon Taiwan. I was a member in KK Stream Applied Data Science team. My job was to help the team build recommender systems. We used the Amazon Data Pipeline to manage recommender system workflows. This talk is about how we migrated the workflow platform from Amazon Data Pipeline to Amazon Managed Workflows for Apache Airflow. Also known as NWAA. The first part of this talk is a list of conventions of this slide. Then I will introduce our in-house workflow definitions and airflow concepts. After that, four issues in our migration will be addressed along with their solutions. Everything covered in this talk was tested with Airflow 2.0.2 on MWAA. An orange can represents some data stored in somewhere. In our implementation, it is Amazon Simple Storage Service or DynamoDB. A blue rounded rectangle. Represents an instance task. An instance task is a task which is executed on a single machine. In our implementation, this kind of tasks are executed on Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, aka EC2. A purple rounded rectangle represents a cluster task. A cluster task is a task. Which is executed on a cluster. In our implementation, this kind of tasks are processed with PySpark on Amazon EMR. A green rounded rectangle represents any other kind of task. It is neither an instance task nor a cluster task. If task A is connected. To task B with an arrow line, task B will be executed after task A is done. It also means task B depends on task A. Task A is an upstream task of task B, and task B is a downstream task of task A. We provision only one cluster in each workflow. All cluster tasks of a workflow are executed on the same cluster. I want to begin with introducing the base schema of our workflow definition. Now imagine that we want to know how many times the movie Top Gun has been played. It would be good if the report can be automatically generated every day. We need a task to collect a new log from somewhere else, maybe from a database or a third-party service. Once the log is collected, it will be transformed and stored in a database. After that, we need another task. To aggregate all logs about Top Gun playbacks, maybe all logs within past three months. 
then the aggregated results are stored in a database. And we want the report to be updated every day at 8 a.m. This describes a daily workflow that reports Top Gun playback times. To achieve this, YAML files are adapted to define workflows. We call the log and the report databases data node. Each data node has its own name. Each data node represents a type of storage where we can read and write data. And this data node represents a key in Amazon Simple Storage Service. Tasks are also defined in YAML files. There are two kinds of tasks. An instance task has to be executed on a single machine, like EC2. A cluster task has to be executed on a cluster, like EMR. Each task has to be executed with a specified Python function. Each task may need to read data from data nodes or to write data to data nodes. A task may depend on the other tasks. For example, a task report playback must be executed after the task collect log has is succeeded. An instance task is actually to run a Python script on a machine like EC2, while a cluster task is to submit a job to Spark. Scheduling information is also defined in a YAML file. Once we have YAML files of a workflow, we deploy it by our in-house tool. Most information, like data node passes and the task node workers, is stored in a database. And the workflow graph is deployed to Amazon Data Pipeline. Once everything is done, we will have a workflow which collects and aggregates reports at 8 a.m. every day. Besides task scheduling, Amazon Data Pipeline also manages resources for the workflows. To be more specific, Data Pipeline provisions and terminates EC2 and EMR for tasks. And once a task is completed, the workflow manager also sends notifications. I have roughly introduced how KKStream's in-house workflow definition works. Let's talk about how Airflow manages workflows. Airflow workflow, we call it DAG, is consists of many different operators. An operator is a template for a predefined task. For example, Python operator is an operator whose role is to call a Python function. The branch Python operator's function is to choose a directly downstream task to follow. When I'm in the office, I can either nap, serve, or code, but certainly not all of them at the same time. Sensor is a kind of a special operator. A sensor blocks a workflow path until certain conditions are fulfilled. Let's create a tag, which will print the date time before say hello to us. We first add a task with ID log time to the workflow tag. This task is handled by a Python operator, which calls the function log time. We then add another task with ID log data to the deck. This task is also handled by a Python operator, which calls the function log data. Now we have two tasks within the deck. 
Let's connect them. Set downstream max the task log data be executed after the task log time is done. Once we have the DAG written in a Python script, to deploy it is simply to put the script in a specified folder. Airflow will then take care of it. Airflow has many other powerful features. One of them is customizable trigger rules. The default trigger rule of a task is all success. A task is executed only when all its parents have succeeded. But sometimes we need different rules. For example, this tag set the trigger rule of the task C to one success, which means the task will begin as soon as one of its parents succeeded. Another powerful feature is the support of Jinja template engine. We can put the names of variables in template fields. Then set the variable using Jinja. TS no dash is a built-in variable. It is a timestamp without dash. The variable timestamp will then be evaluated right before the task is executed. In this example, the tenth line will return a timestamp stream instead of the original Jinja stream. The last powerful feature I want to mention is XCOM. XCOM is the short version of cross communication. It is a mechanism that lets tasks talk to each other. In this example, the operator pulls the return values from all upstream tasks. In other words, a task can get information from completed tasks. We wanted to migrate our workflow platform from Amazon Data Pipeline to Airflow. So what do we need from Airflow for that? The first and the most important requirement was we did not want to compose workflows with Python script. Don't get me wrong, Python is good and we love it. But using Python to compose workflows means we had to migrate all workflows to Python. And everyone must know how Airflow works. Since our workflows involve with both instances and classes, clusters, they must also be supported by Airflow. And we must be able to manage instances and clusters. Do not forget what Data Pipeline has done for us. After the migration, the same notification must work as before. Besides all of this, we always want a global unique ID for each workflow session. It would be better if Airflow can make this for us. Here comes the first obstacle we encountered during our migration to Airflow. Allow me to recap our workflow deployment mechanism. We compose workflows in YAML files, then use an in-house tool to store the information of the workflow in databases and then deploy the workflow to Amazon Data Pipeline. The naive solution would be simply define workflows with Python and put it in a folder monitored by Airflow. However, this method would introduce more problems. The first problem is all our existing workflows have to be rewritten with Python eventually. And every member who has involved with workflows now has to learn Airflow. Besides this, we either have to introduce more definitions or extract workflow metadata from the script since we have to keep them in the database. This is the most serious problem because it is too complicated for me and I am lazy.
To prevent all these complicated works, we started from refactoring the deck. Let's first extract task nodes and put them in a list. Then arrange the operator classes in a dictionary. Create all tasks according to the arranged list of task nodes based on their task types. Then connect all tasks based on the dependency information. Let's extract more information from the deck. This time we also put the schedule information in a dictionary along with the task node list. Write another function to extract the schedule information from the predefined parameters. Apply the schedule by extracting the information from the parameters. Here comes the magic. Make the parameter dictionary a JSON stream and decode it back to a dictionary. Replace the JSON stream with a special token. The entire Python script is not useful unless we replace the special token with the workflow encoded in a JSON stream. Since we have a template Python script to build Airflow deck for us, we can still compose the workflows with our in-house YAML schema. The deployment tool can still extract metadata from the YAML files and store them in the database. All we have to do is export the task nodes to a JSON stream, replace the special token in the template deck, then put the script in the folder monitored by Airflow. Problem solved. Now the obstacle number one is overcome. But here comes the second obstacle stood in my way to holidays. In this section, I want to talk about how we handle cluster tasks. To be more specific, how we handle EMR in Airflow. All our cluster tasks, which utilize PySpark, are submitted to one cluster. So a cluster must be provisioned before executing any cluster task. Each task is submitted to the cluster. Once a task is submitted, we need a sensor to block the flow until that job being completed in the cluster. After all cluster tasks are completed, we need a final task to terminate this cluster. Let's build a block to handle a cluster task. Add an EMR add step operator to submit a Spark job to the cluster. Then add an EMR step sensor to block the flow until the submitted job been completed. Please note that the arguments are simplified here. EMR step sensor also has to be extended to provide spark job results. Add a branch Python operator to choose which one to notify based on the result of the submitted job. Finally, we have a block to handle a single cluster task. Once all cluster tasks are done, we have to terminate the cluster as soon as possible because it is expensive. Also, we want to provision the cluster as late as possible. What if a cluster task is a downstream task of the other instance tasks? If both the two instance tasks need 110 minutes to complete, and the provisioning a cluster only cost us 10 minutes. The cluster computing power is wasted for 100 minutes. To prevent this problem, we can simply make the cluster provisioning task a downstream task of the two instance tasks. 
Then the cluster starts after both instance tasks have been completed. It waits 10 minutes to reduce lots of costs. Let's consider an even complicated case. We need 240 minutes to complete the instance task 3. But we need only at the most 60 minutes to complete instance task 0. Which means we can actually start to process cluster task 0 right after instance task 0 being completed. This case can be solved by inserting dummy operators. A dummy operator task is automatically done once all its parents are completed. It would be great if the provision EMR task can be triggered as soon as any of the dummy task is done. This can be achieved by setting its trigger rule to one success. Let's revisit the flow again. Once both instance task 0 and instance task 1 are done, the dummy 0 task is done immediately. Since one of provision EMR task's parents is done, it starts to provision a cluster. And since all of cluster task 0 task's parents are done, Class task 0 starts to submit its Spark job. However, cluster task 1 is still waiting instance task 3. Now the cluster is provisioned neither too early nor too late. Hurrah, problem solved. Now the obstacle number 2 is overcome. I was one step closer to my holidays. In this section, I want to talk about how we handle instance tasks. To be more specific, how we handle EC2 in Airflow. We could implement another block to handle instance tasks, just like how we handle the cluster tasks. But no, I wish it was that easy. Consulted the documents, we found that there are only three operators for EC2. The first two are for starting and stopping an EC2 instance, which need an already provisioned instance. The third one is for checking the state of a specified instance. None of them are related to executing scripts. Let's implement a new operator to provision an EC2 instance and execute a task on it. We can use AWS Base Hook to get a Boto3 EC2 client, then use the client to run an instance and return the instance ID. Here comes the magic. The argument user data can be a shell script and it will be executed right before completing the instance provision. When provisioning the instance, we can get the instance ID by getting information from this URL. We also prepare a JSON stream to represent one record in a DynamoDB table. The instance ID and the task execution result will be sent to a DynamoDB table in this schema. We also prepare a piece of script to send the record to the DynamoDB table. The shell script first download the task stream from somewhere like Amazon Simple Storage Service, execute the script and get the result. Get the instance ID, write the task result and the instance ID to a JSON file, then send the JSON record to the DynamoDB table. After all steps are completed, we shut down the instance directly. Now we have an operator to provision an EC2 instance and to execute a task on it. Let's implement a sensor to wait the task being completed. The instance ID can be pulled from XCOM 
and we can check if the instance is terminated. By design, the task is either succeeded or failed when the instance is terminated. If the instance is still there, return false, and the airflow will pop again later. Then get the task result from the DynamoDB table. After that, push the task result to the XCOM. EC2 task operator is in charge of provisioning and terminating an EC2 instance. It also executes an instance task. On the other hand, EC2 task terminated sensor is in charge of waiting the instance task done. Yes, another problem was solved. We were almost there. I swear I would have holidays once we have global Unixation IDs. We had wanted a global Unixation ID in the workflow for a long time. If it can be done, we can use it as data version, and we will know all data with the same version was generated at the same session. On the other hand, if this session ID can be customized, the workflow can read a specified history data to reproduce task results. To achieve this, we have to add a session ID to the template fields of each operator we want to spoil this feature. Then let Jinja to evaluate the ID before each task is executed. Then implement a function to build an ID based on deck run ID and a timestamp. Deck run ID is Airflow's session ID, which is not good enough for us. Then register this function as Jinja filter. Then use this filter to generate the ID. The code at the second line, pass tag run ID and a timestamp to the filter, which is a Python function we have just implemented. After that, we use Jinja's default filter to handle the customized session ID. If an ID is provided, use it. If not, generate one using the filter. The variable digrun.comp.session ID is the first argument for the default filter. If it is not defined, return the default value instead. It is a little bit strange, but this is how Jinja handle filter arguments. Now, when we want to use a specified session ID, just add it to the configuration JSON field. Yes, the final problem was solved. I have talked about some problems we encountered and how we solved them. Here are the takeaways. Use a template deck script. Let us leverage existing tools and knowledge. Changing task trigger rules grant us powers to fine tune the workflows. Although EC2 is not well supported by AWS provider, we managed to execute the tasks by sending shell scripts as user data. And the customizable Jinja filters let us create configurable session IDs. That's all I have today. Thank you.